Today I'm going to show you exactly how to edit documentary videos like a pro by recreating one of the most iconic moments ever recorded in human history, the night the Titanic went down. Making documentary style videos used to mean expert software, long renders, and heavy compositing. You needed multiple tools and a ton of skill. Not anymore. Filmora 15 just dropped and it gives you everything to make cinematic documentaries fast. Dynamic captions for on-beat cinematic text. AI extend to turn images into moving shots. Pen tool path plus sticker motion for map animations, animated charts from a raw data, video generation, and built-in expressive text-to-speech and timeline tools to polish audio. We are going to build one viral mini-documentary that combines all of those features in one timeline. Watch the final result first so you know the target. In the freezing night of April 14, 1912, the Titanic crossed the North Atlantic with its decks glowing against the dark sea. As it moved at high speed, a massive iceberg appeared from the shadows, too close to escape. The impact tore open the hull, and the ship began to flood, tilting as panic spread among passengers. A map marks the final location about 640 kilometers south of Newfoundland, isolated in icy water. By 2.20 a.m., the Titanic slipped beneath the surface, leaving scattered lifeboats in the silent darkness, with first class faring far better than third class and crew. More than 1,500 people lost their lives, turning the Titanic into a lasting symbol of tragedy. All right, if this is useful so far, do the YouTube things. Hit like, subscribe, and let's actually get into it. First thing, ask chat GPT, the full short documentary script and the image prompts for every single scene. Once I had those prompts, I took them straight into Gemini and generated the images one by one. And honestly, this part blew me away. These scenes don't feel like random AI art. They feel like lost footage from the actual night, which instantly makes the documentary feel more believable. Now, Gemini adds a logo, and yeah, it's annoying. So here's the quick fix. I opened the image in Windows Photo Editor, click the AI eraser, tap the logo once, and save the image. That's it. Do the same thing for the rest of the images, one by one. Next, I needed real data to back up the story using animated charts. So I quickly Googled Titanic Survivor data by passenger class. I found something helpful. Then I pasted it into WordPad and saved it as a CSV file. Simple, clean, and ready for charts later. At this point, all the assets are ready. Images, script, and data. Now we edit. Open Filmora, start a new project, and make sure you're on version 15 or higher. If you're not, some of the features I'm about to use won't show up, and you'll think I'm lying. I'm not. Let's generate the documentary voiceover. Go to the Audio tab, click Text to Speech, then hit Start. Copy your short documentary script from ChatGPT and paste it right in. You'll see a bunch of voice options. Pick one that sounds deep and serious. I went with this one because it fits the documentary vibe perfectly. Wondershare, creativity simplified. Hit Generate, wait a few seconds, and boom. You've got your voiceover, plus auto captions. As it moved at high speed, a massive iceberg appeared from the shadows. For now, now we don't need the captions, so just hide or remove them. Now import your images. Grab the first scene and drop it onto the timeline. You could leave it as a still image, but that's boring. We want motion. Click on the image, then go to the image to video small icon here. Here is the image you want to animate. Hit submit. I'm using the standard 1.0 model here. In this prompt box, type a short camera move or animation prompt, something like a slow push in or a subtle pan. Choose your video quality and duration, then hit generate. Wait a moment, and your animated shot will appear inside the My Files folder. Drag it onto the timeline. If you notice a small AI watermark on the edge, just click the clip and slightly resize it to crop that part out. Problem solved. Then I repeated the exact same process for the second scene and the third and the rest of the story. Once everything is animated, I just lined up each clip with the voiceover so the visuals match the narration. And just like that, the documentary starts coming alive. All right, now we get to the fun part. Drag the map image onto the timeline. We're going to animate the Titanic's path across the Atlantic. Click that small icon on the clip. Choose the pen tool and start drawing the route directly on the map. Keep it smooth and slightly curved. Once the path is drawn, head to the effects section and pick a style that feels cinematic. You can tweak the stroke thickness, add a soft glow, and adjust the color until it pops without looking cheesy. Now open the path follow section, go to presets, choose the cruise ship sticker, and click link. To animate it, adjust the trim path start and end using keyframes. This controls when and how the ship moves across the map. Instantly, the ship snaps onto the path and follows it perfectly. This is one of those moments where you pause and go, yeah, that's clean. Click the ship sticker, rotate it slightly so it follows the curve naturally, and take two seconds to make it look right. Tiny details like this sell the realism. When everything looks good, select the map, the path, and the ship together, then turn them into a compound clip. Now it behaves like one clean cinematic shot. For the final piece, we're adding animated charts using real data. Go to Effects, then Video Effects, and open the Exclusive section. You'll see
see animated charts right there. You'll get multiple chart styles, columns, bars, lines, pie charts. For this documentary, I'm using a column chart. Open the data tab, upload your CSV file, then choose the category column and the value column. Hit preview and you'll see the data come to life instantly. From here, you can fine tune the colors, animation speed, and add a clear header so the audience instantly understands what they're looking at. Once it feels right, click add to timeline. If you want to push it further, sprinkle in subtle video effects and clean transitions between scenes. Don't overdo it. One good transition beats five bad ones every time. Now let's bring the captions back. Go to the titles tab, click AI captions, then choose dynamic captions. Keep it in English for now and hit generate. In a few seconds, your captions are ready and perfectly synced. You can stick with the default style or browse the templates and swap to something more dramatic. This is where you give it your personal touch. Once everything is locked in, hit export and save the video in a high resolution, and that's it. This is the full documentary workflow using just Filmora. I'll drop the Filmora link in the description if you've never used it before. If this helped you, hit like, subscribe to reach Mora, and I'll see you in the next one.